All right. Video's recorded. Audio's going. Time to record in three, two, one. This has been Cheering Makes School Fun, the program that helps you improve yourself and find out about quality cheerleading and young people. This program is made possible by the prayers and support of cheerleaders and viewers through across the country. The Morning Stream. There can be only one. Guten Morgen and welcome to the Morning Stream. It's Wednesday, January 18th, 2022. Three, three. Oh, that's my first one I messed up. That was Damn the first it. one. We made it all the way to the 18th. Felt pretty good about it. All the shows yeah. I got right, I got it right on here, and then yeah. screwed that up. What the frick? Well, anyway, whatever. There's always tomorrow. Uh, I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian. Hi, Scott. See, this is why this is why streaks are, are, are dumb, and we shouldn't worry about them. You're right. Because you're just gonna because gonna... all they do is is cause you to get upset when the streak is broken. You're right. They set you up we'll for. Go we'll have a beer and let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. See? Uh, hey, so we're back and uh, we got a show. It's Wednesday. We got all the stuff we do on Wednesdays. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Um, I, uh, man, I just noticed this morning, I'm putting all the recommendals together, you know, just getting them yeah. ready to line them up. And I realize I always pick the most depressing things. <laughs> Why do I do that? I don't know why I do that. Is it, is it because you watch? Like, is it because that's that's all you it's not all you watch no, obviously no, right i no. mean you, but is it mostly what you watch i just i guess things? i'm drawn to things that are hmm how do i explain Hard this hitting heavy because no you one's watch really asked me this stuff. no one's ever asked me this before but i think you might be right you might be onto something like yeah. i'll watch when i used to watch cops before i found out how fake a lot of cops is mm-hmm. um i would watch it for the catharsis of it because you know if I was having a bad day, it didn't matter because this other guy was having a way worse day than me. So yeah. there's always like this feeling of, oh, all right, well, there's a guy on meth half naked dancing on the front of a Buick and there's 15 cops around with tasers aimed at him. He right. is having a worse time than I am having. <laughs> well, he currently, while he's dancing on that cop car, is having a great time, but he's about to have the worst time. <laughs> yeah, he's about to have a really, really rough time. So yeah. I don't know. Part that's part of it. Part of it is I like to I like documentaries, and they're often mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. Uh, controversial and or depressing topics. That's just sure. usually how they and, work. And maybe the, the word depressing is probably not the right one. It's like it's uh, moving. You know, it's uh, sure. thought provoking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, some some of it is is that it's like get out of your norm and be faced with something you didn't know before. So sure. there's some of that, but also you know if you tell me. Uh, you know what? What what show am I gonna set off to the side for later viewing? There's lots of those, but why am I gonna watch The Last of Us day and date every day or every time it comes out? Well, probably because yeah. I'm drawn to apocalyptic stories for whatever yeah. reason. I don't know. I can't yeah. quite figure it out, but uh, nonetheless, speaking of that, yes, Pedro Pascal, big right now, right? He's in everything. Yes, having, he's having a moment. He's having that a guy. moment. He's about to have a, a double moment where the the Mandalorian will literally air at the same time as the <laughs> last. There's that incredible crossover episode of. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't wait! You'll, the last put, Mandalorians of us. Yep, they'll put her in a floating egg, and uh, he'll. Uh, <laughs> she'll he'll, be she'll be playing with a little metal uh, sphere, and he's like trying to take it away from her. Yep, and, yep. she'll say, "Are we supposed to go through here?" And he'll say, "No," and he'll point the other way and say, "This is the way," and they'll do that. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, Pedro Pascal, I was listening to this interview with, with him yesterday, and I think he's a fascinating guy, interesting guy. And it occurs to me in his normal talking voice, when he's just mm-hmm. talking to people when without he's, lines. When he's speaking as Pedro Pascal. And yes, not as one of his and not as some yet. character, exactly. He sounds like Alan Alda to me. Really? Okay, I got to hear this. So I brought you a clip, Brian. All right, uh, I'm, I'm theater of the mind. This is good because I, I I'll just be hearing him and I won't be seeing him, so I won't be distracted by his strikingly handsome looks i know right it's like uh, it's hard enough to hold back when i see him uh, normally mm-hmm. but in, in here we have to like ignore it so here it is here's the audio of him just random stuff he's talking about but i hear alan alda in this voice a little bit of hawkeye here you go i i, I called somebody and i i i said i i mean i i cried 
I, I, it's a stretch. <laughs> it's a stretch, but there's there's something in the there's hat. something there. Yeah, there's something there. There's a little bit of a um, there's a thing where your tongue is kind of near the back of your throat. Yeah, you know, that Alan Alda has that a lot. You're big, yeah, you're gonna... <laughs> yeah. That's hey, we it. can meet Paul Sergey here, beach. You know that sort of thing. So, I kind of hear it. It's that little back of the. The throat mm-hmm. in the back of the neck, uh, or the tongue in the back of the throat thing. Yeah, you know, the, the, the throat in the back of the neck thing. Ah, the throat in the back of the neck. Mm. Yeah, uh, but he's like, uh, you just listen to him any any amount of time outside of his acting, and it's just I I couldn't stop thinking of Alan Alden. I realize it's not overt. It's not like, oh yeah, he sounds. Ju- I don't. I know. I'm not saying that, but it definitely sounds enough like him that it's going to distract me in the future. It's going to not bother me, <laughs> but distract me. You know. Well, when they reboot uh, Mash at some point, boom! They'll get they'll get around to it for sure. Then he can be your guy. He can be your uh, your he, Hawkeye. He would be a great Hawkeye. It would be a great Hawkeye. I think about this sometimes. Even though we has we haven't seen him uh, play a doctor, he looks like he'd play a great doctor. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and he looks like he would get a little scruffy, out, you know, in Korea or wherever they said it, and uh, that's fine. You want that? He could womanize and drink a lot of. Uh, what are those called? Those things they drink? Martinis. Martinis, yes. Yeah, you can totally do this. Totally. This, this would be totally. great. Yeah. I, I'm Let's all make it in. happen. I'm all in on this. <laughs> also, there is a very cute picture of him. Oh, no, that's a spoiler. I won't tell you that. I will say this, because yeah. I know you've seen it. Um, there's a certain actress in that show, yes. in the first episode, that yeah. is so familiar to me it drove me crazy the entire time oh is it does she kind of she appears kind of on the fringe of the episode right um let's say she appears on the yeah that's fair to say but uh what i found out is that she's now this is the, this is not going to spoil anything unless you guys go follow this up and look it up okay sure. so don't go look sure. this up but that person is the daughter of um dandy newton or tandy newton however you say her name oh really yeah and it the whole time I was looking at her going, oh, she's so familiar, I, so familiar. That's and hilarious I, because yeah. I absolutely, like, I, I commented to Tina, she looks like Tandy, you know, Tandy Newton. Holy cow. Yeah. And it was, she yeah, is. So, so we're not talking about the woman that kind of appears on the fringe of the episode. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, why is that playing? No. Out on the fringes. Yeah. No, not her. Not that fringe. Not that fringy fringe. Yes. Yes. Mine's oh, yeah. M- totally see Tandy Newton in her. No wonder. Okay. Isn't that weird? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, she was very good also. She was very good. Yeah. Might be better than her mom. Um, All right. (laughs) No offense. (laughs) (laughs) I think Tandy Newton is an excellent actor. There's nothing wrong with her. She's great. Yes. Yes. I don't, you know, no no shade her direction other than my unintentional. Best thing about whichever Mission Impossible it was uh, that she was in. That's right. Oh, wait. Was she in one of those? I didn't know that. Yeah. She was in one of those. Yeah. Was it one One we watched? The one we watched for Film Sack, as a matter of fact. Oh. Because we saw two and one, one and two. Was we she in two? We saw one and two, right. She was in two. Okay. The John Woo one. I like the John Woo one. Yeah. It's not Woo. very popular with everybody, but I like that one. I like it when the uh, doves flew up in slow motion. Yeah. That always yeah. happens in his movies, which is your point. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and also, Tom Cruise had cool long hair in that one. And he hasn't. Yeah. He doesn't really do that very often. Never really has long-ish. the long hair. Tina yeah. and I, uh, we did Mystery Date this last weekend, and Tina took me to this place called Ophelia's and at night it's it's called a gastro brothel so it's a restaurant that that place actually did used to be a a brothel at one point okay so they have a stage and they have bands on there Lisa Loeb of all people is going to be performing there at the beginning of February wow maybe she'll stay yeah um (laughs) yeah it's her big hit man you gotta reference it um but uh, they also do, I think, burlesque shows. Ooh. But because it was a Sunday morning or Saturday morning, it was um, uh, it was Bowie brunch because it was the right around the anniversary of both his birthday and his passing. Like basically, it was bam right in the middle between the the uh, those two events. Gotcha. And uh, so they had a big screen, you know, big projected screen, and they were they had a DJ who was. Uh, mixing Bowie songs, and then they were showing videos of David Bowie, and that guy talk about like going from short hair to long hair to all different uh, different hair lengths. Bowie had 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 all of it. Like, do you, you have see a, all these videos? Do you have a Bowie era preference? Because I kind of like his. I like older Bowie. I like. I thought do you he really looked cool. Like, like yeah. Bowie, like Ziggy Stardust era Bowie. No, no. The, like uh, I don't mean older speaking. that way. I mean older this way. Oh, like, older, newer. Older. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Like uh, like more recent Bowie. Yes. Yeah. 
Like his, uh, he aged really uh, cool. I thought he did. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a hairstyle he had. So he did the whole three piece suit thing with the really short mm-hmm. hair. Yeah. And then he kind of let it grow out. So it was kind of like, kind of grunge mm-hmm. looking. And that's kind of the 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 one. Yeah, that's high point. I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And it, yeah. it surprised me because how many people from the '70s who did glam rock can look that cool in their later years? Very, yeah. very few. Very few. And he's one of those people that I was looking, you know, because they were showing a lot of interviews and music videos. I was looking at his eyes and saying, you know, there's somebody whose eyes and eyebrows, if you just isolated that and showed it to somebody, I'd say seven out of ten people would be able to recognize that as David Bowie. Yeah. Do they have any specials? At least, at least like, people of a certain age. Do they have any brunchy type things that were named after him or, you know? No. No, uh, they had um, their regular their regular menu. This is the first time we've ever been there. But, oh, look at that. Somebody found, like, <laughs> AV Tech John found, like, a, a a grid of Bowie haircuts and hairstyles. Oh, God, look this is great. These. Look at that. That's all. Yeah, this is the st- Oh, whoops. I got the thing up. This is the, yeah, see, That's this is a great. Stuff. Okay, so what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm going to pick a favorite favorite here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm saying second row from the bottom, third picture from the right. Third from the right. Oh, holding the microphone. Oh, okay, yeah, I like that one. Mm-hmm. The one, if you go two more over to the left from that, he looks like Dave yeah. Grohl, weirdly. <laughs> he kind of does. Like Dave Grohl and Tiny Tim. Yeah, he was all over the place. I think he that, was. yeah, I think I agree. I like that one. I kind of like uh, pretty distinguished looking stuff down here on the bottom row. I like mm-hmm. this stuff too. Yeah. Bowie was cool, man. He was cool. He was always cool. What a stud. Even anyway. even with that wacky ass cod piece and labyrinth, this, the dude still was cool. Like n- nobody could pull that thing off. Yeah, and he could work a and pair. Please of glass don't pull that off. No, no, no. <laughs> he could work a pair of glass balls like nobody's business. He yeah. certainly could, although he couldn't. Oh that yeah, that's a, right. It was somebody that else. Was the guy standing behind him. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite bit of trivia ever. <laughs> so 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 weird. So great. Yeah. When we watched that for film sack, and all I could do is think of that guy. Who's just right over there, putting his arm through there, doing this, Sarah? Right, and, and, <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> so good. Anyway, yeah. all right, uh, anyway. moving on. Hey, we got we some good news. Um, it's such good news. I think I'm going to play a thing for it. Hold on. Free hotel oh, room is alive and well. He's great. Yay! Yeah, he's doing fine. Uh, we got an email from Barb, aka the adjoining room. <laughs> this is his wife. <laughs> Yes. I love that name. The adjoining room uh, says, Fear not, Bob, a.k.a. FR, uh, FHR, is alive and kicking. He still listens to you every day, but he hasn't commented late be- lately because I chastised him for being so troll-like. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Um, it pleased him to no end to hear you guys wondered about him in the podcast. Much love, Barb. Well, oh, good. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad he's good, and I'm glad somebody out there checked on him. And, you know, we don't know. I, know. I hear what? about these people in our community, and we hear their names a lot, and then if they disappear it freaks us out we don't it like does it. yeah we still think about uh, uh a lot a lot of the you know the names that were so prominent in the chat room over the years yeah like tvz gone here's another good example guy's fine i checked in on yeah. him he's totally fine but yep. he disappeared from the chat room i don't know what you people did to him i don't know what yeah. you did yeah yeah but he still listens he's you know he's out there he just i uh, hear he hates it when people just type the letters tms during our intro he oh, hates that he must he hate just, yeah um, and every day, every day. Yeah, Ice Worm is still doing great as well. He, um, when you see, when you go to quicktms.li and you see all those music links um, for the songs that we play on the show, that's him putting those in there. Like he does those while I do all of the recommendals and, and Amy's books and uh, Punish Prop stuff. So Yeah, we talk to him all the time. He's doing good. Ice, Ice Worm is still doing great. Yeah, his, war- his ice is still warm. And then who's the, who's the dude in Atlanta that was. Uh, super into us for a minute and then fell off but he was like had questions all the time and we talked to him on the phone oh once and- <laughs> you met him and then he came out to one uh nerdtacular during a QA segment and he brought out his his, his uh, list his yeah. list and he was asking questions that targeted like specific time codes of episodes yeah like it was the it yeah. was the shatner snl star trek bit almost yeah it was a yeah. bit much uh, at the uh, time, but I think he, name? I think he yeah, fell off. He was just like too. He did because I think here's what here's the problem though. 
just no no shade in his direction, okay? No, of course not. But when you are that obsessed with ti literally time stamp code questions, mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a recipe for burnout. You're it not is. Gonna... It's a star. Your star is is glowing too bright, and it's going to burn itself out if yeah. you keep that up. You're not going to yeah. last. And so yes. it's I'm sad about that, but I hope wherever he I is, he's doing good. Other I still think about uh, E. David Croft all the time because oh, yeah. he always had. He came up with the most amazing gifts really quick. That uh, picture of me picking up the chicken. Was, yeah, which is still him. still a cl all time classic. It's, so it's good. an all time classic. Like just the the ability to place a chicken in front of that phone and and have it all work in the video is great. Yeah, but, what uh, happened to that guy? You know? Yeah, I don't know. I hope I he's know. okay. That's our whole point here. Is but, it's yes, okay that exactly. you're not here. We're more worried that you're all fine. Yes. All right. Is Seamus okay? I don't know. Someone check on Seamus. I don't know. He was more of a TMS oh, yeah. or was more of an ELR instance an guy, instance, but still, but yeah, you know, still worry. Also, I copied you on a thing today. This reminds me of this for some reason uh, on Twitter. You may not have seen it. Oh yes, I did see it about okay, sabotage. Do you think that's yeah, where that happened? I would have was replied if uh, my Twitterific was working, but we all know what's happening with that. <sighs> Freaking these third-party apps they killed. I'm so pissed. They found out that it was intentional. There's internal Slack yeah. Slack messages at Twitter where they're like, "Yeah, we need to cut these guys off." And <sighs> Picks sucks man i realize they don't get ad revenue from it but don't have the api in the first place then right exactly yes bastards that sucks but anyway yes the sabotage thing I easily could have come from the session that that photo was in was taken from nice nice oh don't remind yeah. me chat those new m2 minis came out yesterday i'm tempted <laughs> my m1 is I'm, fine i don't really i'm in no rush but the two m2 is you know it's tempting yeah they don't have a new m2 studio right i thought the studio was m2 out the gate no oh really Maybe i could be is. i could be totally wrong on that uh no m1 max or m1 ultra that's okay. that's the next one i'm buying because i am so irritated that that i didn't configure this with more ram and oh and you're kind lo of and behold it's yeah. next to impossible to add ram to uh an m1 mini so that is true i'll bet the m2 m2 update on the studio is probably on its way then if this is happening yeah, and, the and then that'll drop the price hopefully of the m i'm fine with the m1 max studio actually yeah oh, i would that'll be too be. i just don't want to yeah. spend the money just yeah you and me both i know it's i need pricey. to uh, I need to drive a lot of people to the Panera Bread <laughs> in my lift to make that all work. I love, do you go there a lot? Is that a common drop off? No, it's, oh. I don't think I've ever done that. It's more picking up people from Walmart or uh, or just taking them from one person's house to from their house to another person's house, or picking them up from a house where they spent the night back to their house. Or Had anybody drunk lately? Or has it all been pretty on, above board? Ah, I did. I had a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I picked him up. It was about one o'clock in the afternoon, uh -oh. and uh, uh, pick him up. And and there's that that kind of reeking of alcohol that that people who are on a bender, especially certain kinds of alcohol, whiskey and sure. vodka, can do that. And uh, um, I pick him up and. Uh, uh, say hey, how's your day going so far? He's like, ah, not too bad. I'm I'm back living at my dad's house. Moved here back from uh, Austin. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, good to be good to be back in Colorado. He's like, well, you know, it's it's good to be back in Colorado. But I had to sell my house, and I was an engineer at Toyota. But uh, damn. Well, let's just say, uh, yeah, I'm not an alcoholic. But me and the bottle have had our our good and bad times <laughs> oh, together. Oh no. I'm like, oh well, it looks uh... like I'm driving you to Blackjack Pizza, and he says. Um, well, blackjack pizza is what came up in the map, but you're taking me to the liquor store right next door to the blackjack pizza. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, oh, dude. It's uh, too bad. But look at you being all Sam the bartender. I like it. You're yeah, just I helping him out. I, there was another. I, I uh, drove somebody for 45 minutes, one end of town to the other a couple days ago, who um, one of the first things he told me was that he's paranoid schizophrenic. Oh, and he's like, you know, but I just appreciate the fact that you're talking to me because a lot of lift rides you get in, the driver's just completely silent or they're having a conversation on their phone, on their AirPods or something like that, and they just kind of ignore. And uh, um, it's like, oh, I, I try to talk to everybody and I'll always listen and uh, uh, and I'll only offer advice if you ask for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. No, that's good. I think that's good because yeah. most of these drivers are just like, where are you going? Or just sitting there, you know, because they already oh, know where you're going. Just sit there. They don't even have to. Yeah, exactly. They confirm your name and then they just kind of grunt the whole rest of the time. Because back uh, in the taxi days, they at least had to 
where to Mac, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. I think that's the uh, stereotype. Take, I need to go to such and such. Oh, well, I'm going to take the tunnel. No, don't take, don't the, take tunnel. the tunnel. Don't take the tunnel. Go the other way. <laughs> it's five o'clock. Exactly. Kind of George Costanza, that thing. All right, well, that's been your lift update. Be courteous and obey traffic regulations. All right, we will. We will. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, uh, just one other yeah. quick note. If you're coming to Viva TMS Vegas, one of the things we do there that we started doing last year, and I think we're going to do every year, is a video game tournament. Or a really an arcade tournament because they've got pinball as well, and I think I'm going to um, insist that anytime somebody plays a game against me, it's on pinball. Oh, look at you with the old, I'll that's let them some pick old the machine, but I want to play pinball. Like um, it. Anyway, it's at uh, Player One or whatever it's called. I can't remember, but um, you pay a small cover charge, and then you uh, get access to all their arcade games, and, and it's all free, all free to play. And they have a great bar, and we do a tournament there every year. It's really awesome. Really low yeah. stakes. Loved friendly. it there. And it's amazing how well that thing worked as an icebreaker for people. Like, there were people I saw hanging out through the rest of the of, of TMS Vegas after doing that. They were like, oh, yeah, we just met at the, we played a game against each other in the uh, tournament thing, and, and now we're totally hanging out. We're best buds. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. The so, only complaint I had about that whole place was that the Asteroids Deluxe had broken buttons. That was it. <laughs> Other than that, that place was that's the kind of place I would go all the time if it were here. Oh, I know. Yeah. Love too. it. So anyway, that's uh, all so part anyway, of it. So anyway, if you want to play, go sign up at vivatmsvegas.com. I'm going to build the brackets um, uh, as soon as uh, we get that whole thing filled up. I think we'll do, we'll cap it at 64 this time around because trying to maintain two brackets was a real pain in the butt last time. So yeah, it's a lot. 64 of you get to play on the in the tournament. So if you want to play, you better go over there, vivatmsvegas.com, and sign up. Yep. And don't forget, your tickets are now available for both swag uh, only and tickets. Yes. Uh, so it's all at the same place, vivatmsvegas.com. Yes. All right. Done away time. Yay. We like him. He's cool. We do like him. You know, He's I like him people. a lot. He's, yes, he is really good people. He's a good peep peepoo. He's a good peepoo. He's a good peepoo. Yep. Everyone likes a good peepoo. Hey, Brian Dunaway. What are you doing there, man? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hi. Oh, hi, Brian. Hi. It's nice to have you. How well, are you? as I doing, I was messing around with my audio equipment to see if I could do something different, but then I just said, forget it, and fell back to the same old audio. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. It's nice to have you here. <laughs> Hey, uh, we uh, hey, hey, any was... chance uh, we could get you out to TMS Vegas this time around, Brian? Uh, that's Vegas? a good question. That's a good question. I've thought about it, but I haven't had a chance to research it. What's the date? I, I was going to go look. The last week of April, twenty third through the twenty seventh. Yeah, April. I'm not saying no. I can't say yes either. But so you're not I'm saying no yet. It. Yeah, give it some time. It was, do I was saying no. Put you on the spot here, but uh, I was like, oh, what? No, you, you're talking about something I've talked about for like alms. 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 We lost you. Oh, we lost him. <laughs> Holmes. Oh, there What's you're back. You're back. You're back. Holmes. What's up, Holmes? <laughs> yeah, it sounded like you got cut off. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. If it ends up happening, it'll be a glorious thing. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I will. I will rework glorious. everything we're doing to to fit you into uh, some of the some of the special stuff I have planned. Well, it's very exciting. I will do it. I will do my best, and if not, 2024 is probably my best bet, but I'm still trying. I'm still trying. All right, we have our uh, third person who I have chosen from the tadpool today who uh, pinged in as a potential uh, contestant today or or a possible winner, and they're now on the line. Hi, Lucky Phil. How are you? Oh, hi, Scott. Brian, Brian. How are we doing? Good, good. good. Where where do you hail? Where are you from? (laughs) Oh, I'm in Sydney, mate. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh, what, oh, what time is it great. like? A, but what time is it oh, there? Thanks, uh, it is currently stupid o'clock, also known as 3.38 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's just uh, you Brian. People, you Brian. people who listen live uh, to this show from like Australia or the UK or, or Ireland or wherever, like it just, it, uh, I'm sorry, Northern Ireland, it just well, amazes me that uh, <laughs> you, you stay awake long enough to listen to us. Yeah, that's well, wild. I, I work nights and weekends, so it works out all right. All right. Nice. Uh, 3.30, that's when Brian Ibbett gets up because he can't go back to sleep. That's a pretty, normal pretty time. Much is. It, was, it was again this morning, too. Oh, yeah, I finished, man. <laughs> I finished the third season of Harley Quinn and uh, oh nice, and then watched uh, YouTube videos trying to because those usually put me to sleep is what, like 
oh, I need to watch this video about how to crimp wires for this thing. So I'm like, oh, I'll watch that now because I usually fall asleep while I'm sitting at my desk having to watch one of those. That's amazing. Oh, dear. Uh, well, it's good to have you here. I'm very excited to have somebody from overseas uh, on today. And uh, oh, we're going to play some games and uh, explain what uh, how it works and what you might win. Brian, take it away. I will. I'm going to give Scott a welcome to the It's the Family Feud. Wait a minute. Why does that say that? That should no. be this. Tad the Tadpooly feud. feud. It's time to play the Tadpooly Feud. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy <laughs> topics, and Scott and Brian will have to predict the answers that they gave us, and it's their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Lucky Phil, we're going to test your name right now. Your job All is right. more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian. If your team wins, you'll get a prize package that includes... Rise, Son of Rome, and Drawful 2. Oh, very those popular are both really good. in these parts. Yeah, yeah, they're very good. And those codes oh, will good. work in Australia, I'm told. They're international they codes. Yeah. Very good. No region. Um, yeah. So uh, let's let's give the uh, the boys their topic here, and we can see who's going to get you. Uh, we asked 510 <laughs> tadpoolers, and only one person said pass. Only one person. And so what's great is that they know who they are right now. They're listening to this knowing, yeah. oh, well, I'm the, I'm the chump that said pass on this question. 100%. Pass. <laughs> yep. Exactly. No safety in numbers for you, buddy. Nope. Uh, all right. Hands on buzzers. What's your favorite pasta dish? No. Scott. Spaghetti's got to be up there. It's not my favorite. Uh, show but. me. Can can you be more specific? Oh, um, oh, geez. Is there a? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different kinds of spaghetti. I there are. Inhibit on this one. Can you be more specific? Spaghetti. Uh, I'm just okay. saying. I, yeah, just. just Lady, let's, we'll, this shows how bad I am at food stuff. <laughs> I can't think of variations of Lady, spaghetti. Lady in the Tramp. Just think, Lady <laughs> in the Tramp. Spaghetti and yeah, there meatballs. There, I guess. There you go. All right, okay. show me spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> That was painful. <laughs> Number three, two answers will beat it. Brian, what's your what's the, what's the Tadpool's favorite pasta dish? Hey, they like a bunch of uh, Garfield lovers. How about some lasagna? Oh, damn it. Right. Show me lasagna. Damn it. Number one answer on the board. So damn it, I you're going to be working mm. with Lucky Phil. Lasagna. Which is good because he's lucky, so he'll he'll help you out a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not Hopefully. I'm not a, I'm not aware. Uh, does the Australians they eat a lot of pasta? Is that a is that a dish? Down uh, there? we do. We have quite a quite a large Italian community. Um, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. yeah, overall we just love our fatty carbs. Now, do you guys say okay. pasta or pasta down yeah. under? Because uh, I know in we say pasta. Okay, you say pasta. Okay, okay. I know yeah. there's some yeah. some uh, countries where it's pronounced mm. pasta. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So he brings bacon. Yeah, I ca I call them pasties, and I put them on my nipples. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What's great that's is reason you why you get, get those. The, uh, that's why you get those looks at the restaurants, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you can get the spaghetti to spin around in opposite directions at the same time, that's the best. <laughs> yeah, that's when you get the center stage treatment. Mm. Exactly. Anyway, All yeah. right, uh, Brian and Phil, what what else you got? Phil, you got oh, anything off the top of your head? I'm thinking. I mean, uh, maybe a carbonara. Okay. Oh, that sounds interesting. That's yes, a, let's do that. Carbonara, yeah. sure. This is when you uh, cook it with uh, bacon or some sort of uh, uh, cured pork. Yeah, and either pancetta eggs. Cheddar or it, bacon. bacon. Yeah, it's it's basically bacon and eggs and cheese with spaghetti. Oh, or pasta. Whatever now, now, you, now you've got me. That sounds great. Oh. Okay. Let's see if we've got I'm some carbonara in. on here. <laughs> oh. Sure do. Number yes. four. Tadpool loves their spaghetti carbonara. Yeah. Of course they do. It's got why. carb you know right there had, in the oh, name. Oh, now I see. Yeah, now I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, but right. you got the better of the two. That's true. Well, okay. uh, Phil, you got, yeah. you got another uh, pasta loving lover. I'm thinking bolognese is the obvious one. Okay. Okay. We, I, well, we're going to go with that. Brian, <laughs> Brian has a very. Uh, I'll well, take your word call, for it, sir. As, as we called in Australia, spag ball. Spag ball. <laughs> spag ball. <laughs> we call it spag ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great! I can I call? Can we? Here today. Or can uh, we do that from now on? Are we can? Are we allowed to call I it that? Won't. That's awesome. I want to say yeah. that from now on. No, you can't. That's I'm, appropriation. Well, <laughs> that's appropriation. <laughs> that's fine. You know what? All one right. of my one of my bucket lists was to have an Australian say, "That's appropriation, mate." <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that. I wanted it. Now I can check it off. Thank you. That was awesome. All right, show me bolognese. Some yeah, Yo, was, look at uh, that as well because it's uh, nice and spicy. So I these like are all. I didn't realize these were all spaghetti forms. 
Uh, they they don't have to be. Well, um, pasta. You can do yeah, you can do like a penne bolognese or a mm. um but what I did was when I got the the uh answers from the chat room if they had a bunch of like carbonaras but it was like penne carbonara or yeah. fettuccine carbonara or whatever, I took whatever had the most in this case spaghetti carbonara and added the other right, carbonaras right. Oh, to it. So okay. okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So that makes great sense. Well, you guys are a hell of a lead so far. What's your what, what else you got over there? Not doing bad. Well, lucky Phil has been lucky so far. I'm going to go back to the well again. If, if Phil has another one, do it. I'm wondering if gnocchi would be a bit too niche, or, would, or if that would be on there. I never even heard of that. Gnocchi? I haven't either. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> just some gnocchi. Gnocchi. Maybe yeah. fettuccine. Oh, so yes, yeah, some fettuccine. Do we have okay. to specify? Any more than that? Uh, give me a sauce. Fettuccine Alfredo? Let's do oh, that Alfredo one. Right. is the most popular one. It is yes. the most popular one. Show me Fettuccine Alfredo. Uh, yeah. There you go. Fettuccine Alfredo. That's for, those, uh, that's for those Olive Garden lovers. There you go. There's your answer. I want to know we more about this nachi too. or nochi thing. Gnocchi? 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 They're like little um, almost it's, uh, dumplings. It's, it's, little, uh, uh, it's like potato pillows. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. do like those. Uh, yeah, you know what? The, I've had. Just, I've had it as a, as a mechanism to soak up the sauce. That's right. Exactly. I've I had don't that. Know what potato pillows are? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they make them in Idaho. No, I, 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 I've That's never. Uh, I have had that and just didn't know what it was called. Those are very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a place near us that used to have the best duck gnocchi, but uh, they started putting less and less duck in it, and now they don't even have it on the menu. So it's like, all right, well, we're never going there again because that was their only good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, you guys are on the mm. roll of a lifetime here. What's you are, uh, what yeah. else? What you I'd got? be a fool to try to. I'd be a fool to try to guess anything when Phil is on a hot streak. So uh, unless you have run out, give it another whirl, Phil. <laughs> I'm having a brain fart, and maybe you should you should uh, you should tag him. That's too much pasta. I'll give you a yeah. brain fart. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? So uh, let's see. We got uh, we got uh, bolognese on here. We got uh, the fish the, 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 So I mean the, the trash pasta's up there. Lasagna and fettuccine Alfredo. <laughs> so that's got me covered. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I, I like a, I like a nice uh, I'm, I like a nice nice ravioli. Oh we, damn it! Have some oh, ravioli? Can be specific ravioli. for the ravioli. You poo okay. head. All right. That was mine. Uh, was show me ravioli. Oh shit. Yep. That's, what's funny is that most you people you said just ravioli, but then people just said oh, ravioli and sauce. Like you'd have it just. Well, I take that back. Ravi Tina and I have had like a really good pumpkin ravioli um, with. Oh, with no you know what's weird oil. is that is how good pumpkin ravioli is. It is, it is. unbelievably totally is. Yeah. good. Oh, I think yeah. I have a good one. What All do right? you got? Oh, Phil, give it to us. Bloody hell, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> now you're thinking. Now you're thinking like Brian. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, mac and cheese. We're going the mac, mac and cheese. The macaroni. Do it. Do it. Give me the macaroni. Show me macaroni and cheese, not necessarily made by Kraft. Number six. <laughs> nice. Nice. See, here we Killing think it. of that as complete Killing trash it. microwave food, but it's you can do it right. It's good if you yeah. do it right. Yeah, you can do it right. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right what else you, got? you guys are running the damn board here. My gosh, killing me. Clara, how would I piss off the Italians? I said cured pork, and you guys all said bacon and stuff like that. The original is <laughs> cured pork, gensinale, or G gen gensinale. She Her exact quote is, in all caps, you will all die at the hands of the Italians. That might just be a general... <laughs> Prediction. Prediction. <laughs> no, no, because earlier she said something like, Brian, uh, Brian's never pissed off an Italian before. You guys are going to get so <laughs> <laughs> Also, that's a broad assumption. Maybe he's pissed off plenty of Italians. We don't know. Exactly. We yes. don't know. Me or just uh, uh, Ibit? Which one? Oh, maybe she's talking about you. Not oh. you, other Brian. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, it's you, It's you, Brian. Right, right, oh, right. other Brian. See, it's this me. is the hard part. This is the trick with the Brians. It's hard. <laughs> I have a lot of Italian friends, and they're always... All my Italian friends are laid back and chill. Yeah, they're they're going to make chill. fun of they're me just chill. as much as I'm going to make fun of them. Yeah, they're they're look, yeah. they're 1940s era Italians. Those aren't around anymore. We're they, good. They know they know that my teasing only goes as far as pasta. After that, I have no Italian jokes. No, 
You're all uh, done. Mario. I will say that this yeah. this feud is making me so hungry. Right <laughs> I know, now. dude. It really is. <laughs> I'm supposed to cut back on pastas, but I'm, you know, I'll make an exception today because this is get making me zoodles. hungry. Go to, go to Noodles and Company and get some zoodles. Oh, yeah. The zoodles are all right, although zoodles. sometimes there's more water in there than I'm comfortable with, you know? Yeah. Or some potato pillows. Yeah. Or some pillows. Uh, that's where every day is a cheat day. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, so you got anything? You got anything else up your uh, carb hole there, Phil? <laughs> my carb hole. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, that's going to be the name of my new Italian restaurant. The yeah. carb hole. The carb hole. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, we, we've had ravioli. How about uh, tortellini? Oh, oh, damn it. Ooh, tortellini. You guys just keep taking my good ones. Good. All right. All right. Oh, that makes me, me think of another one. Show me tortellini. Oh, oh what? what? Tortellini uh, popular enough to make it to number 18 on the list. Okay. Ah. Uh. Uh, well, this Scott is... Scott finally gets another chance. Yeah, and I, yeah. you guys took all my shit. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't even know some of this stuff. I'll just say, oh, it's the tadpole. Maybe they did this because they're jokesters. <laughs> this is dangerous. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. I that's can't win bad, anyway, that's right? Not a bad angle. Right, Brian? Um, I can't win. I think you could, actually. There's still uh, 27 could he, though? points on be... the board. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'd win, but we, Phil's definitely going to win either way because if he runs the board, I Scott think wins. So. I think yeah, because Scott. Yeah. yeah, right. If Scott gets any, if Scott two, loses, enough. Phil, yes. right. Okay. Yeah. So right. so Phil, you've won. You're a winner. Phil, you've won the prizes. Oh, now we're just playing for <laughs> yeah. bragging rights. By the way, for, thank for you bragging for putting, rights. Yeah. Thank you for putting these pictures of pasta dishes into our Discord and pushing oh, geez, away that gross, in? invisible. Uh, s- creature that Bobby put in there yesterday. Oh, oh yeah, yeah the, 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 I saw that pictures of gnocchi. One of them's cooked, yeah. the other one's uncooked. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yummy. Anyway, okay. So, All right. The only uh, other thing I can oh, think Jesus. of is looks good. a reference to an old <laughs> TMS meme, <laughs> uh, which I at the time didn't know what it was or how to say it because, again, I'm I'm the antithesis of a foodie. I don't know the terms, but right. Isn't isn't creamy peen a thing or penne? Sorry. There you go. That that's a pasta <laughs> shape at least. That's a throwback. Jesus, yeah, a that throwback. is a throwback. But isn't that uh, a that's show, a thing, right? That's a thing. yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Show me. Uh, don't show me. Uh, is creamy peen up there? <laughs> it is not. Show me your creamy peen. Oh, show me your creamy peen. Uh, f- number fifteen. Enough people still liked the creamy peen meme. <laughs> Great, great. Even, mean, mean. even even the doofus that said pass could have said that. And yeah, would have been better oh. than just saying pass. Yeah, but now more people are going to want to be a doofus. This is the problem. They're going to want to do. No. Oh, we lost. Oh, Dunaway. so you'll get attention calling yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. We lost Dunaway for don't some reason. Don't be a doofus. Let me re-ring him. There we go. I don't know why Dunaway dropped off, but he did. Hold on here. Let's oh. see. <laughs> lucky Phil remains lucky and is still here. Yeah, so, right. But uh, unlucky Brian. Hold on here. Let's see. He's. Uh, oh no. We're ringing him. We're ringing him. I mean, we can still continue without him. It's not like we'll die. That's true. Um, all right. Well, we'll let... Oh, there he is. Brian, there you is. back? Cool. You, back? you know what would be a really good time to do a Windows update reboot? <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Restarting in five, four, three. <laughs> all right, Brian, it's back to you. You and Lucky Phil have a chance here to run the board and kill me. Phil, you, you got another answer? I guess you haven't run the board, but... Um, just having a bit of a think. Um, well, how uh, about some Tetrazzini is a thing, right? Tetrazzini. That is a that is a thing. Is it a thing? Hmm. I don't I'm not know. sure if that'll be popular enough there. Hmm. If Tortellini Button didn't manicotti. get it, see, that's my. I'm concerned now because Tortellini, I was absolutely sure it'd be on here. This blows yeah. my mind. So I. Ooh, I um, would you consider beef stroganoff a pasta dish? Oh, I would, but I live in the south. Uh, well, <laughs> everything's a pasta dish in the south. Uh, so hold on a second. <laughs> Stroganoff is n- noodles. It's noodles. It's yes. pasta. It's got noodles in there. It's got the okay. little wavy noodles in it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm yeah. helping, but yeah, that sounds like a real thing. It's, it's made with white flat noodles, like uh, similar mm. to fettuccine. So mm, I do like a good stroganoff. You, you like it a sauce? You like, you like it a it sauce? sauce? <laughs> One of, the best, the, uh, one of the best the, SNL things ever. It was about. one of the best SNL skits. And that's one that, that comes up frequently with uh, Dana Carvey and David Spade on that show is uh, because this was such a great sketch with the two of them together in it. You should see, so the Chris Farley documentary I recommended on the yeah. recommendals yeah. years ago or yeah. months ago. 
he talks about or they talk about that skit and how Farley wasn't even supposed to be in it. And the fact that he showed up in a giant fake beard, he almost made it That's impossible right. for them to get it done. Like he was That's just right. It completely broke broke uh, so many of them. Yeah, yeah, they just couldn't handle it when he was there. Yeah. That's really funny. People should watch All right, that. Doc. So, anyway. So beef stroganoff, is that what you're going with? Do it. I'm stroking off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking of the stro- stroganoff or cup noodle. Oh, what's a cup oh, noodle? A cup noodle uh, uh, ramen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. See, that's the thing is the tadpole oh. may say dumb stuff like that. Well, anyway, it's, it's yeah, the tadpole. Thinking of I never yeah, did yeah. say like, Italian, you know, right? I yeah. just said your favorite pasta it's dish. Pasta dish. Yeah. So it could be noodles in a cup. That's well, true. Exactly. Plenty, huh? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, so which one are you going with? Oh, I don't bloody know. <laughs> <laughs> Do Stroganoff. Let's do go Stroganoff. Stroganoff. Right, yeah. Let's go with Stroganoff. Show me Stroganoff. I just want to hear Dunaway say Stroganoff one more time. Jeez. Yeah, he keeps saying it exactly. He's going to milk that joke. Number 21 on the list was Beef Stroganoff. I saw the joke. That's how I say it. <laughs> I believe you. I do. I believe that you come home and say, ooh, I smell Stroganoff. And, and then, I'd like, yeah, I'd like you to isolate out. It's not a joke. That's how I say it. I want that, like, I want that uh, to be a permanent audio gonna, clip for this I'm going to go find it. He did another. He did a real bomb yesterday. You got to hear this. Dunaway said a thing. He knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, it was during Play Retro. You got to hear this. This is really too good. Uh, This is what he said. I know she did not come in your hole. All right. Anyway, moving on. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Moving on. Wow. I can't help you hear what you hear. I'm going to say SpaghettiOs because I'm all out of ideas. Oh. Sure. Because that's a dumb thing and it's pasta, I guess. I don't know. Why not? All right. Show me SpaghettiOs. Damn it. Not Uh-oh, even, no not spaghetti-os. even one. Not one? I could have sworn the chat would have said that. Really? No. Sure. Ramen. Ram, ramen. 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 <laughs> ramen. Ramen. Ramen noodles. Ramen style right. noodles. It is a pasta dish. Show me ramen. <laughs> Show me ramen. <laughs> oh, three oh, strikes. Uh, ramen. ramen was on the list. It was number... I guess it was tied for... Yeah, tied for last place. Uh, twenty number what? twenty-eight. Uh, only one person said ramen, but oh wow, yeah. Um, Give me some pesto. His, fr- mm. you know what? I'll say one that's. I don't even think there's pasta in it, but it. How about uh, chicken parmesan? <laughs> it's, I can't oh, think of anything good. else. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, right. sure. It chicken parm with pasta. It's, yeah. It's, All right. It's delicious. Do right. chicken parm. Show me, show me some of that chicken parm. Oh, Number look at that! <laughs> I'm at shocked that. by usually, that. Usually, yeah, I usually usually get on a bed of pasta. That's usually a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, chicken parm, you taste so good. Oh, what's the <laughs> Z one? Uh, the uh, uh. Oh, what the what one? The one that's like a uh. Oh, it's got a Z in it. Hold on. Okay. It's got a Z in it. Ooh, I know. Shit, is I it? Can't remember is it, it. Spazetti? Is that what you're thinking of? <laughs> Zeddy, 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 Zeddy. Creamy zine. Something Zeddy. Is it a Zeddy? Wait, you might be on it. Zeddy? Spazetti? Yeah. Zeddy? Spazetti and meatballs. It's delicious. Zeddy, 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 Zeddy. Zeddy, Zeddy. it's Zeddy. Like you're... Uh, we'll go, I'll, I'll say close enough. Do a little Zeddy. 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 Is it Zeddy? <laughs> it's not Zeddy? <laughs> it's not, not pronounced Zeddy. You your friend is Zeddy. But, yeah. All right. All right. Show me Zeddy. Oh, amazing. Now look amazing at that. At wow. Back oh, my gosh, dude. Look at that. How is this going to happen? Okay. I got one left. You got it. You got it. Come on. One more. One I more. Got one left and I got a strike. Uh, <laughs> this is going to go bad. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, uh, Scrimp scampi. That's not a thing. I mean, it's not. A, yes, shrimp scampi is. Well, no, but it's not a. Oh, you know what? I just thought of one. Okay. But they're not thinking of that. They're all thinking Italian. Because so far, these are all Italian. There's no way they put in some Asian thing oh, here. Macaroni and cheese is an Italian. Well, I guess it is kind of Italian. But it's, <laughs> it's, or, it's origins Americanized. are. Americanized, yeah. All right, I give up, and I'm just going to say... I'm going to say Pad Thai, because I can't think of anything else. Sure. Oh, all right. Mm, I do love me some Pad Thai, though. Show mm. me Pad Thai. Damn it. Oh. Um, Pad Thai was Close, on the though. list, uh, number twenty-four. Really tried. Yeah, oh, people that's... did say Pad Thai. Uh, you're gonna kick yourself. I am. I'm ready. Because you all talked about this one and never used it as an answer. 
Yoki. Oh, really? Well, he should have gone with Lucky Phil. He knows his stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we did, but we picked Stroganoff over it or something. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, I think that was I think it. So, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, no. Some other answers that people had in here. I'll just get to a couple of these. Um, uh, just plain old, uh, let's see, linguine. Baked spaghetti. Uh, had some of that. Uh, cacio e pepe, which is. Um, it's not uh, real, like is garlic it? And, garlic and. <laughs> oil or something it's my favorite uh, mini boss in mario odyssey or garlic and cheese yeah uh penny alla vodka uh spaghetti aglio e olio which what? is garlic and oil stuffed shells sh uh, scrimp scrampy as uh as brian says it scrimp, <laughs> scrimp, scrimp. Uh, uh eggplant parmesan with a couple votes manicotti what? i thought carbonara. about that but i was like surely oh uh, penne right. carbon that's the penne i was thinking of yeah. Not the creamy yeah. peen. Oh, yeah, well, that was, that was even lower on the list, Penny Carbonara. Yeah. And then, stuff, you know, single people, single things. You got East Side Mario's Cheese Capoletti and uh, Frog Eyed Salad and Johnny Carino's Chicken Bowtie Festival. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, wow. That sounds, like a way, that sounds like a mob kill is what that is. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Johnny Carino's Chicken Bowtie Festival. That sounds terrible. Wow. Leave the, take the gun, leave the... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> here's here's the good news, though. It, you, yeah. you you won. Congratulations, you're a winner. And because you're oh, just right here in Discord, we can send you these codes like lickety flat. So Brian will Doing send us right over now, to you. As a matter of fact, yeah. Uh, lickety, lickety, flat. lickety flat sounds like something Australians would say. I'm sure it isn't, but it sounds like it might. Be. <laughs> wow. Ah, That's lickety right. flat, apparently, they'd say. Apparently in uh, March 2018, I sent the only other time I've talked to Phil in Discord, I sent a message that said, hey, Lucky Phil. <laughs> and uh, nice. never got a that response back. Never and got a reply. Get, oh, wow. oh man! Yeah. Never. But now you've got now you've got these two games in here. So good luck. Here's what's funny. <laughs> Let me tell you something please. funny here about Lucky Phil. I just this just blew my mind. He sent me the "Hey, I want to play" message. Right? Like I mm -hmm. have people do yeah. on Wednesdays. Yeah. It's a picture of Hulk Hogan. It's a GIF of Hulk yeah. Hogan yeah. eating pasta. Oh really? How is this possible that you're wow, that lucky no of a lucky Phil? I don't there understand. There it is, right there, with like pasta behind him and stuff. Yeah, Stamania. <laughs> Phil, pasta how did mania. you how did you do that? Was that? I mean, did you, you just grab a random thing or what? How did it go? I, I just I just grabbed a random gif and dragged it into the Discord. Unbelievable! Yeah, yeah. That is the raddest yeah, thing ever. Different, there's a totally different search engine in Australia. Right. You, nothing but Hulk Hogan pasta. So I could have I'm done what's your favorite pasta or name a washed up wrestler. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, or name a douchebag. All three work. All right. That's right. Uh, nicely done. Congratulations. You should add those codes now. And thank you for playing. Hey, Brian Dunaway, you were also fun to have today. Oh, we had. So it was super easy for me today. Mm -hmm. I just sat back mm -hmm. and put it on cruise control with Phil. Just pretty do it. Pretty much. Yeah. That's yeah. Your, that's you your ripped pasta connoisseur there for sure. Let's uh, remind people last mm -hmm. night, uh, Play Retro went up. We talked about top down single screen racing games, which uh, I have a huge soft spot in my old arcade days heart for. And we talked about those at length. So if you want to uh, listen to us go on and on and rave about things like Super Sprint and Badlands, uh, good news. That episode and went super up. Super off road. Yep, super off road. Don't forget. Uh, those are available now, or that show is available now at Play Retro, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, or you can go to frogpants.com slash play retro. Brian, is there anything else you'd like to say before I kick yeah, you out? We're, we're having a film sack this weekend, and I can't recall what it was. Do you guys remember? Dared Evil. Dared Evil. Daredevil. Daredevil. Uh, starring the Ben Affleck. Oh. Uh, where did you hear that name? Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> I'm not going to watch that. Yeah, you are. You're watching Banana it. That's going to It's got Banana Flick in there. Banana and, Flick. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. Dun Duncan. I didn't, didn't mm -hmm. make, make fun of. Uh, no, because he passed away and we want to be nice. Yes. Sure. Uh, exactly. You got you got your uh, you got your Colin Fer Colin Fer Feral Colon is in it. <laughs> Feral Colon, yeah, yep. Furrier Colon, and uh, he's great as always. So anyway, now, check which, that out. Which one's the blind guy? Uh, that's uh, that's your that's your Ben Affleck that's your, there. That's your Matt Murdock. Oh, okay. Yeah, your Matt Murdock. Okay, and uh, he he fights people with sticks and has horns. All right, we'll see you later. Right. Bye. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, Tom Merritt will be joining us, talking a little bit of tech and uh, some recommendals with. Uh, I think Nicole's out today. Yeah, she's out today. She's but, out. Yep, so it's just uh, you, me, and Randy. Yep, so E3. watch for that. Coming up shortly, but in the meantime, Brian's going to play a song. Brian, play away. Okay, we're going to go to Boston for this one. Uh, Nervous Eaters have a brand new album. It's called Monsters and Angels. This is... Uh, 
Uh, the newest single from that, it is called Chad. Here are Nervous Eaters. It's called Chad? I love that. All right. Yeah. Like the place like or the Chad. person? Like a guy named Chad. <laughs> uh, the, it's a guy named Chad. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, guys named Chad, get excited. Here comes your song. We'll be back in a moment with Tom Merritt. We'll see you then. Portfolio. Hoodwink. Anus. Tackle. Morpho. Sorry. You're about a bark and a half from being homeless. The Morning Stream. If your head comes away from your neck, it's over. And we've returned. Remind me who that was again so we can find it. That was a band called Nervous Eaters from their brand new release, Monsters and Angels, and a song called Chad. Oh, Chad. Chad. No, not all Chads are bad. Some Chads are nice. No, no. Some Chads are hanging. That's right. And we know some Chads who listen to the show. We do. And we would never make fun of the Chads who listen to the show ever. Never would, make, never would we make fun of the Chads. No. But we will talk about tech here and there. With the computer, as with any tool, the concept and direction must come from the man. That man is Tom Merritt. He joins us, as he does every Wednesday, to talk about the tech stories of the day. Tom Merritt, welcome back to the program, sir. Well, thank you, sir, for having me, and you too, sir. Yes, both sirs are here for you, sir. <laughs> uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, uh, man, I always feel, I can't, I don't know if this is just me, but every year you got the CES, right? The year just mm -hmm, like blasts mm -hmm. into focus as soon as Christmas is over and New Year's is yep. done. It's like, get to Vegas. We got to look at all the weird stuff they're making. And yep. then there's like no this. No rest. <laughs> get right in there, January That's 2nd. right. And then there's yeah. like two weeks of like, kind of a weird sigh of like all right now we've sussed it out and we kind of know what's yeah. what and then now what all is the uh, all the tech people both industry and reporters are exhausted yep uh and they all lay down and take a two-week nap yep they've all got the probably a bunch of them have covid now who knows what happens <laughs> after uh, you leave a long week in vegas but uh i one thing i always know and can count on tom will come here on wednesday with actual stuff in the tech world so tom share with us what you found today well, I'd like to talk about top hats, but Apple actually uh, put out some news. <laughs> oh man! Uh, two days in a row. Wow! Okay. What two? Oh my gosh! Okay, so I knew about the M2 uh, the M2s, mini and yeah, notebook up there, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, in fact, we may break. We we have an unofficial rule at DTNS not to talk about Apple two days in a row in a discussion segment if we could at all help it. Yeah. Uh, but I was just typing. One of the reasons I was a little late picking up the call just now is I was just typing with with Sarah saying like, well, maybe we break that rule today. Mm. Uh, and it's because yesterday, if you didn't hear, Apple uh, released two new chips, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, mm -hmm. uh, and immediately put them in the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So what would normally in the Intel days have been a like, oh, Apple updated the chips in their laptop, not a big deal, uh, became a huge story because it was brand new Apple Silicon. Yeah. Uh, they also put M2 chips, not the new M2 chips, but older M2 chips, uh, not that M2 chips are old, in, <laughs> into the Mac minis. Yeah. Uh, crummy so, old M2 yeah, chips. Yeah. Dusty old, like almost <laughs> a year old. Yeah, not even quite 12 um, months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they put those in the Mac Minis, which leaves the Mac Pro as the only Apple desktop, laptop, uh, PC type thing with an Intel chip mm -hmm. inside. In fact, it's the only Apple product with an Intel chip inside. Uh, so so th that was kind of significant. And it was interesting because they didn't hold an announcement. They didn't invite the press. They just put out the press release and also put out an 18 minute video, the kind of video you would have seen in a big live streamed uh, announcement. Then today they went and announced uh, that the big HomePod is back mm. uh, for oh, a while. Really? Yeah, for a while they've only had the HomePod mini, but a second gen HomePod speaker is out. Uh, it has the same processor that was in the Apple Watch 7 uh, and also includes thread radios, which gives it Full matter support. Uh, and they added temperature and humidity sensors, so you can do some fun routines of like, you know, if, if the temperature reaches this degree, you know, turn off the lights, I don't know, uh, whatever you want to do. Play Nelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah take, and uh, remove the clothes from your uh, automated <laughs> closet. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, so, so you've got that uh, oh. out there as well. So two days in a row, Apple releasing things that they would have saved up for an announcement in the past, 
which yesterday Nika and I speculated, well, is this because the mixed reality set headset, you know, they don't want to do they that till later all the time in June to that probably. Or, and yeah. then Mark Gurman says Apple's actually going to delay the lightweight augmented reality glasses it had been planning yeah. uh, and instead do a cheaper version of the first generation that it plans to announce still sometime this year, which makes me think that that mixed reality headset it might not come out in the spring afterwards. Uh, yeah. After all, uh, the 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 word from German and Ming Chi Kuo and the people who are pretty reliable on this stuff has been that it was delayed from an early 2023 announcement to a spring announcement. But I wouldn't be shocked to hear them say that it gets pushed again since they're they're rejiggering their their release schedule as they try to figure out do they have the parts, do they have the things they want for the augmented reality headset. So all kinds of Apple news. Yeah. Uh, and actual wow. news in most cases, not not yeah. even just uh, German. Yeah, German they stuff. don't feel like fluff pieces so much. Uh, the one thing I read about that new HomePod is that it will it somehow ties to your smoke alarm and your O2 alarm stuff, or your like oh, uh, your carbon wow. monoxide stuff. Uh, well, through Matter, I think, that must uh, be and, and therefore through HomeKit. Yeah. Uh, it can it can do some stuff like that, especially because it has a temperature sensor. Mm -hmm. So if the smoke alarm goes off and tells the HomePod, hey, I'm going off, and the HomePod goes, yeah, it is Nelly time in here, mm -hmm. uh, then it could send you an alert. Like, uh, you, you're not only is your smoke alarm going off, but it's also hot. Or yeah. it could also tell you your smoke alarm's going off, but it's like 32 degrees inside. So yeah, yeah. you need to turn the heat on. Yeah. The price isn't bad. Didn't it drop a little, too, for the second gen? It's a uh, free... Yeah, $299, $299. Uh, for, the, for the HomePod speaker. Yeah. Um, so Feels yeah, like that was more bad. before. I can't remember how much the first one was, but it seemed like it was a lot more. It, whatever it was, it was way <clears> too pricey. I ended up with um, a free one because my dad got one when he bought something from apple so he sent one to me and then uh, i'm like well and it's the little small globe so i'm like oh well i'll buy a second mini, one yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the mini and then i'll have i'll be able to do the stereo thing and it sounds they sound great yeah they, they have and, good the, and this this new big home pod can do the stereo thing as well even if you have sure. a mini. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah i'm, yeah, I'm kind of tempted sure. um partly i don't know if anyone else is feeling this way but I, I i feel like i've had enough time with uh audio assistants to know how i'm using them or which ones i'm using the most and for what mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think if I'm honest with myself, mm -hmm. I almost 100% use the echoes in the house, which is currently what is around, for music. And ironically, the music I'm having it play is on Apple Music it's, anyway. It's from Apple Music, yeah. So right. I feel it's part funny. of me I is do like, the exact same thing. Part of me yeah. wonders, like, should I get uh, you know something? I know Sonos's are out there, and there's other things you can do. I'm not saying this is the only option, mm -hmm. obviously, and Google's got their stuff. But but if I want better sound because I am using it primarily for music and can still use it for the few other odd jobs I give it. Maybe, maybe now, maybe now I switch. Cause I'm, I don't know. I just don't use the a word for much except accidentally can, setting her you know, off. And you can do this with your echo devices to stream music from your, your, Apple devices to it, use it as a Bluetooth speaker as well as having it do its own. Oh, yeah, sure. Apple yeah. And it play, it'll do course. Apple music natively. All that stuff's fine. Yeah. It's just where I'm coming from, from, it's mainly like, hey, do I want to upgrade sound? And I know yeah. Alexa, or and the, sorry, I'm set off everyone's Alexa just now. Sorry, cancel. Um, that's the other reason I want to get rid of it. Mine for once. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's but broken. I, I want to, I, I guess what I want to do is up my sound game a little, uh -huh. but without breaking the bank and going nuts. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, because you could go, because uh, you can get Amazon and Google voice assistants inside, like, you know, big big uh, uh, sound bars right. and stuff like JBL sound bars uh, if you wanted to go that but I, I get what you're saying is I want the echo sized speaker I don't want to have right. to put in a you know a big expensive speaker uh, but echo may not have the sound that I want is the home pod better is the Google home better or Google, or nest nest home now yeah uh, and, and yeah it's it's what's cool with matter finally rolling out is you can do that and not have to like get rid of light bulbs <laughs> and mm -hmm. stuff. Unfortunately, right now you probably still will have to uh, adjust, but but you won't. You'll know that anything you buy in the future, you won't have. You won't be locked into certain smart home products because all of these platforms are going to support each other. Yeah. Uh, one quick note on the M2 stuff. Uh, the you mentioned the Pro being the only remaining Intel product, and it's funny because that thing came out right before all the M1 stuff happened. Yeah. Like right before. Um, and you can configure even the current M1 studio to rival 
match even exceed in some in some aspects the the capabilities of that pro in the giant box do you think they'll do you think that product even gets made again like why wouldn't they just make a studio yes. pro they and- They've been saying things indicating uh, they definitely have plans to release a new Mac Pro. Mm. Uh, my, if I had to guess, this is purely a guess, they have looked at the Mac Pro supply chain and said, let's not mess with that. Mm. Uh, one of the reasons that you're getting M2 Pro and M2 Max now instead of before the holidays is is considered to be because of supply chain issues. Right. They they would pref- have preferred to put it out with their autumn announcement, uh, but they they just didn't want to risk uh, the you know not having the supplies, so it got kicked down the road. I'm guessing they look at the Intel chip that goes in the Mac Pro and say, you know what that that supply is locked on. Uh, we probably shouldn't threaten that. Uh, it's it's fine where it is. Let's get everything else out there. See where the supply chain problems are, and they are they are easing uh, quite a bit. I wouldn't be shocked if we hear a Mac Pro with an Apple Silicon chip announced at WWDC. That's mm-hmm. a good time to announce a Pro style device, mm-hmm. even though they don't usually announce products at WWDC. When they do. They're often developer related like that. Yeah, and I think the last Pro update may have may have actually been that event. I think they did. Yeah, I, I know they did a big Pro update, and I think it wasn't the that it went on sale then, but they said, you know, stay tuned in a couple months, and then a couple months later, this this Mac Pro that we have now came out. All right, well, interesting stuff. I I mean, there's is there ever been a chip in the history of chips where I wanted to almost make out with it, and that's so far been the M1 for me. <laughs> I love that. Ch- I love my Mac yeah. Mini. I love yeah, that M1 too, yeah. so much. <laughs> it's so good at everything I need to get done. Yeah, and you're so, like, hold on, M2. We're going too fast. I know. <laughs> but I, I admit I'm tempted now. Plus, that new Mini M2 has got the, the proper number of freaking Thunderbolt ports, where the last one they totally skimped on it. So, uh, yes. the higher end yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I have yeah, to think about one. it. Another reason for me thinking about the, uh, the studio as soon as they do the M2 is. Uh, uh, all the ports that I then don't have to use an external device to, to give me. I want a studio pretty bad, too. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, there you go. There's today's Apple news. And there'll be more of that and other cool <laughs> stuff covered today on the Daily Tech News Show. Uh, so make sure all you right. check it out at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Tom, anything else you'd like to mention about that or anything, really? Oh, uh, lo- lots of fun stuff going on. Uh, I did uh, Charlotte Henry's The Addition with an A, The Addition podcast. Uh, this week, uh, talking about AI. Is AI coming for the podcasters? Is it coming for the journalists? Uh, so that was really fun. Uh, just just look around for the addition or Charlotte Henry Substack. Uh, and uh, later th- this week, I think later this week, uh, I was on the uh, the Geekscape uh, podcast uh, with Jonathan London. Uh, so we we talked a little bit about AI. Everybody wants to talk about AI and, and generative algorithms. We also talked about The Last of Us and and some other good stuff. Uh, so so look for me out and about in the world uh, on on other podcasts as I as I continue to celebrate uh, DTNS heading into its tenth year. Nice, uh, always available when you post those things on his Twitter account, which is Ace Detect. Soon to be maybe four thousand characters worth of Tom Merritt. Can't wait for that. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm yeah. just going to fill every character, yes. every post. That's right. Yes. Uh, I feel Tom like Merritt. I need to. I have all this extra room. I got to yeah. use it all. <laughs> you got to use it for something. Anyway, uh, tweet longer, everybody. Tom Merritt. We'll see you this afternoon. Have a good one. Bye Thanks, now. Man. See you, Tom. All righty. Whoops. That's weird. Oh no, it worked. You didn't get kicked out. Okay, good. No, I'm still here. Hi. It did that thing yesterday makes me nervous when it boots. I did the exact yeah. same process yeah. moving him as I did yesterday with uh, whoever it was. Who was on? Bobby, I guess. The one Bobby, right, yes. Yeah, you, and right. it reset the call for him, but this one it didn't, so I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain these things. They're like magic. I'm just I'm just glad. I'm just glad I'm still here. Aww. That's all. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, the hell are we doing? Oh, yeah, Randy. It's time for Randy. How about recommendals? <laughs> yeah. Get a little lost in the uh, Wednesday. Let me, let me put my seatbelt on if we're bringing Randy in. Yeah, get you your seatbelt ready. ready because right. this is okay. happening right here. <laughs> Joining us right now, Randy Jordan, a.k.a. Randy Deluxe. Hello. Good morning, Randy. 
Good morning, morning stream. Hey, that was nice of you to say. Thank you very, very much. I <laughs> uh, just, uh, just want to run through my notes really, really quick here. Yeah. Known Scott for 16 years. Yeah. I've asked him a million times, what's up with all the dark stuff, all the murder porn? And Scott this morning said out loud, no one's ever asked me why I like Oh, that's true. You have <laughs> asked me. I, you, you, you know what? Just call me no one. Just I'll, call I'll cop to that. No, I'll cop to that. You're right. You've asked me that before, but I don't know why I wouldn't have answered you. That's weird. I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, gnocchi is not a pasta. That's a dumpling. Right. And uh, um, that. and I just want you to know, I just want you to know, if uh, if you ha don't have anything and you're choosing from all of these, from these Amazons and Apples and so forth, yeah. go with Google. Yeah. Google is Google is the user friendly, like the, the best home for you. Uh, it's, it, I, I do like its services and stuff. I just I'm, I'm thinking more audio focused because that's all I use my damn thing for. It's just like all I use it for. And the other reason that I don't always jump to google as my first option is because they cancel shit all the time mm -hmm. or they change yeah. names they're like oh we're calling it the nest home now well, yeah, well because next they week we'll call it google money on that name <laughs> yeah but they i don't know you know what i mean look at stadia i hate that shit when they do that okay, they do it okay. all the time I'm I, there's a there, it's actually a really good reason in my opinion for going with Google instead of say Amazon, and it's because Amazon wants to sell you Amazon, and Google wants to sell you everything. Google Google is trying to support the whole world. Yeah, the entire internet. Just, You're right. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just better for for me. The other so, day, I said to my stupid Echo, I said, uh, Echo, play. Uh, I don't know what it was. I'll just make one up. Uh, play Frank Sinatra's greatest hits from Apple Music. I said, and it goes mm -hmm. boom. Hey, here's an idea, is what she says. <laughs> I can do these four other dumb things you don't need or want right now. Do you want me to do those? I'm like, and it took her 30 seconds to tell me. I'm like, I could have been halfway through Come Fly With Me by now. <laughs> what are you doing? Ah, yeah. Hated it. Uh, anyway. Well done, Scott. It's good I to have, have been, you here. I have been really missing you guys, uh, especially um, the last few days. I've been rolling in money from these uh, uh, NFL wagers. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and just, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, I'm really, really happy. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I'm are really, you? really okay. happy. Okay. Oh, so I'm glad to hear it. I wouldn't yes. take that as a dig, fellow gambler uh, Brian Ibbett or anything. But um, I'd like to show, I'm going to take a screenshot of my DraftKings uh, balance and show you how I've done over the season. Yeah. So, all right. Yes. Had a bad weekend, you, yeah, but it I've was, had a very good season. It was just one of those things, you know. I like yeah. you and I. You and I decided to share each other, share with each other what we were doing going into the weekend, yes. and we happened to be picking complete opposites. <laughs> it's like that's a very, it's a rare thing. You have buddies that you compare picks with. You yes. very I'm rarely are yeah, completely opposite. You're in a league. Right. I didn't know that. That's cool. I am. Yeah, it's a a CBS uh, betting a bet em pick em pool, and I'm going to bring Randy in next season. Okay, it's five bucks a week, and uh, winner takes a big chunk of that at the end of the season. Been, but you you probably would have done really well for the weekend. I've yeah, been doing yeah. I've been doing really well since I turned 21. I've had people ask me like, "Hey, why don't you try to become one of those like you know one of those sell yourself prognosticators?" I'm like, oh, "Hold yeah. on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Those guys clearly are." Aren't winning. Well, you, you guys <laughs> right, put, exactly. you guys put me in the, You keep that to yourself. You guys put me in the mood for this. Oh man, football! Oh, what a time that. to be a fan, ladies and gentlemen, on the field. You've got exactly seven games left. Is that right? For this weekend, two the following weekend, then the big, and then the big, yep. uh, the, the big, big show. show. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and I just and I just want to say, of all those picks that you and I were opposite on, yes. I'm most proud of the Cowboys because. It was. Well, it felt so obvious to me, and it felt so obvious to you. Well, listen, you were right. Here's Texas. the deal. It felt so. It, it was. It was the more obvious choice. The Cowboys have been doing great. I thought that. All right, Tom Brady's. This could be his last game, maybe as a football player, but but almost certainly as a Buccaneer. And so I figured, all right, well, he's going to go all out. And despite the Cowboys not being able to um, kick uh, a ball through the uprights. <laughs> yeah. That was amazing, four, Scott. Four, Scott, four misses a, or five? They set a historical record, missing four consecutive extra points. Oh my god! It was unbelievable. Well, almost all wide right, except one was wide left, and uh, yeah, and, and caused yeah. Uh, what's his name, Eli Manning, to lose his mind. <laughs> well, it's funny because anyway, everyone yeah. thinks of those special teams guys as kind of quiet and never having to do much to come out, do the easy thing, and leave. But every once in a while, focus is entirely on them, and sometimes it's game-winning focus. But yeah. often it's they can't hit the freaking broadside of a barn with their damn 
Yeah, and then anyway, you so overcompensate, anyway, this... and you go wide left, and then yeah, yeah, yeah and then the, the and then they're thing... all anyone wants to talk about for the next four days. It's like, ah, yeah, no, the important thing exactly. is to talk about me, put the focus on me. I'm I I, I had a really good time. Well, good. good. Uh, we're gonna have a good time here and play some recommendals. Brian, uh, you are beginning as always here with your thing. Would you like to set up your clip at all? I will absolutely set it up. This is a series that was actually recommended to me by my stepmom. Uh, when we were out in Vermont, she told me about it, told me that they were watching it, and we managed to get caught up with the whole show right before the finale of the second season. Nice. And, and the um, third season coming or no? Third season is coming. It's in the works right now. So this is this will continue, and I am so glad because it's so good. I've been waiting for one uh, of us to see it because I've been wanting to hear from someone I trust whether they liked it or not. So yes, love it. And uh, here's here I had to I had a three minute clip that I had to pare down to like less than a minute and a half, but it was so hard because like oh my god, there's so much good content that I took out of this, but I wanted it to begin with one thing and end with one thing, and so I just. Ch- took out some chunks in the middle of it. Um, hopefully my editing won't uh, <laughs> won't be noticeable. All right, here we go. Okay, do you want to tell me to put him under surveillance? <laughs> well, that's an interesting proposition considering the last time you were given any sort of responsibility. <laughs> A lot of innocent people got blown to bits. And there it is. Oh, well, I'm sorry you find it so tiresome, Cartwright, but it's not the social faux pas you seem to think it was. You... you you didn't break wind during someone's wedding now. What was it? Uh, 149 dead, 212 injured, uh, 3 million in damages, half a billion in lost revenue. It was a training exercise. Uh, if a pilot crashes a simulator, he doesn't then brush it off and go, well, sorry, it was a fucking exercise, and then expect to be put behind the wheel of a 747. It's not the same thing. No, it's worse, you t- I am surrounded by f- cups in this building, but you are the gold standard of f- cups. By all rights, you shouldn't even be here. You should have skipped this purgatory and gone straight to hell, melt you down for glue, but you avoided that because your name is Carvage. So when you wonder why I have you going through the rubbish of a disgrace at right wing journal, I wonder no more. It's because I don't like you. And I don't want you to quit. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's yeah. good. That's good stuff. It's Tell us who this a, is. It's such a great season or scene. Um, that is a show called Slow Horses. This is a spy thriller with bits of, of uh, little bits of comedy, but mostly a dramatic uh, spy thriller based on the, um, the, the series of novels by Mick Herron. Um, Slow Horses is kind of like a a rough play on the term slough house which is a an administrative purgatory for mi5 agents that uh that fail that screw up uh, as as gary oldman who you hear in that clip puts it f-ups <laughs> it's almost like there, a... they like get relegated to slough house and become slow horses um so they basically get you know menial tasks uh, crap jobs and the uh, frequent uh, verbal abuse from Gary Oldman, who's the boss of Slough House. Um, he plays a guy named Jackson Lamb, and it is it is Gary Oldman at his grossest and finest. Like he <laughs> farts at people, he belches. He's like you know the 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 boss you definitely don't ever want to have. Mm. Um, he uh, the other guy you're hearing in that clip is River Cartwright, uh, played yes. by Jack Loden. Uh, he is an MI5 agent, so he was the one in this training mission at the very beginning of the episode that uh, that screws up and uh, and gets relegated to uh, Slough House. This is an Apple TV series. There are two seasons, or serieses, as uh, they call them in the UK. Uh, six episodes per season, about an hour long each episode, and it is fantastic. Uh, Kristen Scott Thomas plays the MI5 uh, boss that that Gary Oldman kind of reports to. Oh, Ooh, love I Dame love Kristen Scott yeah. Thomas. Yeah, she's she's, good. she's fantastic. And Mick Jagger does the theme music, and it's such a great song. And I looked it up to make sure, but it's a it's an, a Mick Jagger original that he re- uh, wrote and recorded for this show. Oh no specifically way! Specifically for this. Does show. Does he sing? Is it like a sung thing? He sings it too. Yeah, and I couldn't like. 
I was like, oh man, that sounds like somebody doing a, a pretty good Mick Jagger impersonation. Then come to find, nope, it's really Mick Jagger. <laughs> yeah. But it almost sounds like Gaz Coombs from uh, uh, Stereo, not Stereophonics. Um, uh, shoot, forgetting the name of the 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 trio, the UK trio that Gaz Coombs uh, was lead singer for. Um, you also get uh, Olivia Cook, who I always love seeing Olivia Cook. She's my favorite uh, Olivia in Hollywood. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. There's, there's a lot, a lot of Olivia. Way, way, okay. way more yeah. than Olivia Munn, way more than Olivia Wilde. I like me some Olivia Cook because uh, yeah. she's, okay. she's always so good. Um, you might know her as the, the friend of Norman Bates on, uh, um, on the Bates Motel show years and years and years ago, the one that had the oxygen breathing tube. Oh, right. Um, she, she was just she's, uh, Allison Hightower in House of the Dragon. In yes. House of the Dragon. Yep, exactly. Oh, she's uh, anyway. freaking great. She yeah. is super grass. Thank you, Lucky Phil. Uh, yeah, she is. She's fantastic. And she is a. She, you wonder why she's in Slough House because she actually is really good at what she does. You don't know uh, why why she ended up where she is is she uh, but but she is there for some reason we just don't. she is there for some reason okay. uh jonathan price very prominently uh, uh basically he's cartwright's grandfather in this he another another game of thrones uh connection hold on there. where do you uh, just back to the olivia thing where do you put her yeah. up against olivia coleman I, that's what oh, i was wondering oh shoot i forgot i know olivia that's a coleman. hard those are hard olivias to suss out which okay, one's better tied tied for best okay. olivia all right there you yeah. go i like right. it the Good British Olivia, you know what? British Olivia's, you win. Good job. Yeah, yeah. We we have such inferior Olivia's here in the U.S. to yeah. the Olivia's you get overseas. I mean, <laughs> Olivia Newton-John is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, she but is, but I don't call her a Hollywood. Plus, Olivia. she's Australian. She's... She doesn't count for. This <laughs> argument. Sorry, Lucky Phil. Well, Sorry. I mean, she, you know, she had a couple. Well, she had one really good movie, and yeah. but I know her more. You know, think of her more as a <laughs> uh, a singer than a sure. than an actress. Fair enough. Um. What else was I going to say about this? Uh, let's see. I mentioned Jonathan Price. Um, this is this is one of those things that if you're if you don't have Apple TV Plus, this is one of those things that I'd say this would make it worth it for a one month subscription. Binge this. Watch um, C. Watch uh, Coda if you haven't seen Coda. There's there's easily enough stuff to to give you um, plenty to make your five bucks or seven bucks or whatever an apple tv plus i think it's uh, six, six bucks oh, yeah. now or severance something. severance uh, severance yeah, of course Mythic quest. ted lasso like look there there yeah. is no longer a reason to wonder if that's a worthy subscribable thing it's 100 yeah. percent is so if you're just easily throwing 15 bucks at hbo or you're chucking money at hulu every month without thinking about it you're missing out. Like even if you're like some kind of weirdo that hates everything Apple does, <laughs> you right. you're missing actually, out. It's some of the best I stuff. Don't, I don't think a month is enough if you haven't. No, I, I'm looking at the list like uh, for all for mankind. All mankind yeah. yeah. Uh, they they God, have a hard so time much. making Mythic, Mythic Quest. They have a hard time making crap. They really do. Oh, the after party, which I thought I recommend uh, recommended last year, and I love that show. I think I talked about it on my best of. Um, yeah. Well, also, didn't we like uh, Central, uh, the animated thing, Randy, the Central Park thing? I think it was you. Yes. Yes. It may have been me, but I love. It's all good. All of it is good. It's all good. Yeah. You, you, six bucks, man. It's like a, co a cheap coffee per month. Just do it. It is. Yeah. Oh, Pachinko. God. Yeah. There is so much good stuff on Apple TV Plus. So get it. And one of the first things you should watch are the two seasons of Slow Horses. And uh, and then you can sit there and and uh, wait in with anticipation for the third season. All right. I'll tell you the the opposite of slow horses on Apple TV is Schmigadoon. It is oh, yeah yeah. It is so divisive. Like people I'm either not love watch or no hate. No musical. Everything. Yeah yeah. <laughs> Schmigadoo. What is it? Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon. It's uh, is this Jordan Peele and Cicely Keegan Strong. Michael Key, Keegan oh, Michael Keegan Key, Michael Key, and Sorry, Cicely yes. Strong, and Fred Armisen, and on and on. I miss this yeah. entirely. I didn't even know this was a thing. Oh, there it is. It okay, is, yeah. it's a hilarious musical that tries not to be a musical, if if that makes any sense. All right, divisive. Yeah, oh, yeah. there's a Harrison Ford thing with uh, who else is in that? It's called Shrinking, and Harrison Ford and not Paul Rudd, but somebody. Um, so when they were in the pool and they got out of the pool and then someone saw them and they said it's sh there's shrinkage and is that whole thing? Shrink, it was cold. It was cold. It was cold. Pool. Oh, pool. you know what I was? Okay. Gonna, I don't remember what I was going to say. I was going to compare it to um, Bodyguard. If you remember uh, Bodyguard, which had uh, um, was oh. it Manning or uh, no, uh, the guy no, that was the, the Game of Thrones kid, Richard Madden. Yeah. Um, yes. So good. 
Uh, Slow Horse is a lot is a lot like that. My wife and I have. I don't know why we've been putting this off. This is up right up her alley. It's up my alley. Yes. Slow Horse. Oh, you man. guys would love this. It is, and it's. I mean, second maybe to to Sid Vicious or Serious Black. It might be. It's certainly my favorite recent thing that I've seen uh, Gary Oldman do. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. I'm going to uh, put mine in the middle here because we'll get the depressing documentary out of the way. All okay. right. All right. Sounds I good. shouldn't say it's all depressing. It's actually got well, some I'm really putting great... it in the other order, the order we usually do it in on Quick TMS LI. But... All right. No problem. Because <laughs> I, I always switch this up with these two. But uh, anyway, yeah. here comes mine. Since the U.S. Congress was not willing to alter America's quota system, Roosevelt would not ask any other country to change its own laws to take in more immigrants. Though it was his hope that other countries might volunteer to do so at the upcoming conference. In July, representatives of 32 countries met for a week and managed only to form an intergovernmental committee for refugees. All right, there's a it's a short clip. It doesn't really tell you too much, but this is for the U.S. and the Holocaust, a film by Ken Burns and Lynn Novak. They're always working together on most of their stuff. Uh, Ken Burns, known for a billion amazing things, including uh, Civil War, the baseball documentary that I watch, I feel like, every year. Um, uh, their World War II documentary called The War. Vietnam's amazing as well. Just amazing. And Peter Coyote is the voice you heard there. That's the voice. Okay, okay. yeah. Yeah, you hear, he uses... At times it sounds like Donald, Donald Sutherland. I almost did a Fletcher there. Oh, uh, yeah, I could hear that. Let me Since the U.S. Congress was... Yeah, you can kind of hear... I could hear that for yeah, sure. Yeah. He he's he goes back and forth these days, uses Peter Coyote or uh, David or Keith David for almost everything. Like, those two are his sure. go-to guys. So mm-hmm. Keith David was the World War II one, which is amazing. People should watch it. Um, but it's a Ken Burns documentary. His most recent came out last year. Uh, I want to say in the summer sometime. It's on the PBS app, so that's where you're going to get this one. They have a free trial, so not hard, not hard to watch. Um, and it's called The U.S. and the Holocaust. And basically, it's a deep dive into what was happening, you know, un- unlike the World War II documentary that covers all World War II stuff, including the Pacific and Japan and, you know, everything. This is a very focused thing on what was Germany doing when were they doing it? How was it going down? And how were we responding here in the States? Sure, yeah. And it is eye-opening in a bunch of ways because there's a lot of stuff going on there I didn't know about. I didn't know that there were gigantic Nazi rallies in huge in the United venues States, yeah. in the United Pro-German States. Pro-German factions all across the Absolutely. United and they were big and they were loud and they were all about what Germany was doing and wanted to do the same thing here. And they were kind of formidable. Uh, there was, here's what I like about the documentary, because in a lot of ways it does pull back the onion and say, um, you know, we keep calling this the greatest generation, but there were some problems and there were hundred mm-hmm. percent. And this does expose that Ken Burns has never flinched away from the truth. He's a, he's a, he's a great filmmaker, but I, I do appreciate that this also features a ton of really wonderful people trying to do good on the ground. It's usually smaller efforts. It's not big governmental sweeping things, but it's like this one rich guy just could not take what he was seeing and took it upon himself to figure out a way to pay for as many Jews as he could to get out of uh, occupied German zones and get them in places where they could get get a new start at times when the government wouldn't do it. And that guy got like arrested for doing this. There's other smaller stories about uh, you know, people in 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 Germany or in Poland that were doing uh stuff that were just downright heroic, uh, amazing personal stories and big broad stories about what was happening on a global geopolitical level, and it's great. It's as good as you expect anything out of Ken Burns. My favorite tiny detail was, uh, they had to have a voice for not Goebbels. Who's the other top? Oh, I forgot his name. The other top Krebs. German. No, crap. He's like second in command. I don't know why that name always makes me laugh. Goering, that's who it is. Oh, Goering, So Goering was like second in command right behind, uh, you know, he's like Hitler's biggest confidant, that guy. Yeah. And you know how Ken Burns always hires a lot of famous voices to do, you know, different readings of people's diaries and stuff like that? So he's got Liam Neeson doing somebody, and he's got um, other actors and people that you'll recognize doing voices of different people. And for Goering, he gets freaking w- Werner Herzog to do the voice of Oh, really? Of Goering. That's why you were talking about Werner Herzog, yeah. Herzog the other day. It was perfect. 
perfect for what he was, he was reading diary entries from this psychodo psychopath. Um, and it was perfect voice. Uh, anyway, I loved it. I love all his movies. I can't think of a, a Ken Burns film that didn't rock my socks. So if you're into that kind of stuff, this is also very good. And it's his brand new one. It's available on PBS. He has said out loud before he thinks this might be the most important one he's done. Oh, wow. um, after watching it, I think he might be right. And it's for oh. a bunch of reasons that if I mention them here, I'm going to have somebody say something shitty, so I'm not going to do it. But the parallels to rhetoric we're hearing today, there's a bunch of it in this. And it's it's also really good to just have, have the sunlight flat out expose shit you didn't know about. Like yeah. real history in your face so that we don't repeat some shitty mistakes. It's very, very good. Can't recommend it enough. Again, uh, the movie is called the, or sorry, it's a series and it's three episodes total. Let me make sure okay. I'm telling you right. I think so. Yeah, three big episodes. Uh, not sure how long they are each, but anyway, I, it, it went fast for me. Uh, and PBS, the, you have to sign up. You don't have to sign up for anything. Uh, uh, PBS, kind of was, yeah, you do the free, they have a free trial for the PBS app and you can, mm -hmm. you could do this easily in the month they give you or whatever it is. Uh, but there's also all his other stuff is there. So I'd actually kind of recommend hanging out and checking it all if you get a, get a chance. Yeah, there's some really good things in that list that you can go watch. Oh, yeah, dude. Like one some, of the ones. Like some really good stuff. One of, the, one of the Ken Burns movies that blew my mind that I didn't think I was even going to be into was the suffrage one. Yeah. That blew my freaking mind. It was so good. Also, the the one about um, you stop drinking alcohol. What was that called? Uh, the the prohibition. Prohibition. Gee, prohibition prohibition and it's yeah. the name of the, 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 movie, the name of the thing that's another keith david joint he narrates uh that's fan freaking tastic the jazz one's really good like he's just when he goes we are lesser human beings i'm telling you mm -hmm. but that guy's an important voice and it's such good stuff anyway can't recommend it enough that's the u.s and the holocaust a film by ken burns uh go check it out now and uh let me know what you think all right well Randy, let's get to yours. Any setup here okay. for you? Um, so I just, I was looking for something to watch that was familiar and comforting and so forth uh, this week. Yeah. And I watched a movie that I've now seen maybe four times since it came out and uh, found it on Disney. Um, this is what you're about to hear is a, a, a good famous actor. Uh, he plays the 30 something expert at something and he is talking to the teenage boy next door who wants to do this dangerous thing and uh, trying to keep him out of it. And of course, uh, the movie is about the teenage boy becoming really good at this dangerous thing that the 30 something does. All right, here we go then. Hey, sir, I want to ride that wave. I want to take that drop. Not going to happen. Why not? Because untrained boys don't step in the ring with Mike Tyson. That's why. Buddy, I've been surfing that break for 20 years. You have any idea how much strength and know-how you need to survive a break like that? Frosty, I'm getting stronger by the day. Right. I'll hold my own. Right now, I'm surfing every single day, right? So if Shut I Shut up, all right? Now, I know how good you are. I've seen you out there. You surf circles around those other kids. But those are normal waves. Surfing normal waves is about how you perform when everything goes right. A big wave surfing, that's a different ball game. That's about how you perform when everything goes wrong. One bump off the face of that wave, and you're hitting the water like concrete at 50 miles an hour. And you got a thousand tons of water coming down on top of you. It's knocking you senseless, ripping you apart, and pushing you down to a place that is so deep and so dark. You don't want to be there. So why do it? Is that Gerard Butler? Yes, that's yeah. Gerard Butler in Chasing Mavericks. And uh, he's, um, okay, she's talking to Johnny Weston. You might not know him. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Weston's mom is played by Elizabeth Shue. She's fantastic. Probably how I ended up on this movie because I just watched The Saint before that. Oh, nice. Um, the, uh, uh, Gerard Butler is married to Abigail Spencer, who has a freaking tragedy. It's just, this is a this is a really heartfelt, really good movie. It's like it's it's like you know Disney for adults, and it it's about um, 
a guy who's one of the surfers that discovers the Mavericks. It's this uh, sort of like huge set of waves that you could surf if you're crazy, uh, not far from Santa Cruz, California. Mm. And he and his he and his friends are you know n- now well into their adulthood, and they're going out there, they're sneaking out there, and they're learning how to surf these massive big waves. And this is a true story. Uh, the uh, Chasing Mavericks is based on a, a book by the the guy who uh, was the teenager here. Mm. Um, the movie it's directed by Curtis Hansen and Michael Apted, which is kind of crazy. Like these two guys, like Curtis Hansen made L.A. Confidential and Eight Mile and so forth, and then Michael Apted is the you know the Seven Up the. Seven, oh, seven up, 14 I knew that up. Name, yeah, 14, yeah, that name was familiar. Up. Yeah, he passed away in 2021, and now that new, I guess the new one's being carried forward by somebody else. But yeah, I knew yeah. that name was familiar. Does does he? That's it. so. This is that explains kind of the real story connection. Like this guy would be interested yes. in that that regard. Yes, yeah. and and the what I want to say about Chasing Mavericks, I want I want you to watch it not not because it's a surfing movie. It's not really a surfing movie. Like there's some surfing in it, but it, it's. What what the thing about this movie is? It's one of the best examples I've ever seen of when you have a ten scale, and you have like uh, uh, all the parts of a movie on a ten scale, and it's a seven for acting, and it's a seven for music, and it's a seven for cinematography, and so forth. And every single part of the movie is competent, and somehow when you add them all up, you get a nine. Hmm. It's the strangest thing when when a movie gets it nails everything just good enough and the sum of the parts is so much better than the parts um that, that that's what this is Ger- gerard butler is uh struggling a little bit with doing a california accent um it comes and goes yeah. i i wish they just let him <laughs> they just let him <laughs> uh, well i've said this so many times just let the actors have their natural accent when yeah. when it doesn't matter he can be an Englishman who's, or a, a you know an Irishman or whatever. Do you like, know what I mean? Do like, like, Cher- who do like to Chernobyl. Be living here? Do Chernobyl that did that, where they just let everybody talk the way they talk, yeah. and yeah. it worked great. It was so good. Just fine. Yeah. Yeah, nobody said, "Wait a minute, that doesn't sound like a Russian accent." Yeah, in a, in a way, it sounds a little daring. Like, oh, are we going to get away with this? But once you hear it, you realize I don't ever need you to worry about this. Just everybody talk like they talk but then again there are certain british actors and like australian actors who nail it so hard when they do american stuff Mm -hmm. that i kind of don't want them to have to you know what i mean like there's a place Mm -hmm. for it but in gerard butler's case he struggles with it and that's okay so just tell him he can talk like he normally talks (laughs) you know but okay so this movie came out in 2012 it's an older one but uh uh, also curtis hansen's last film he didn't die he just hasn't done anymore um which I mean, makes uh, he did too. Curtis Hansen died like seven years ago. Did he? Oh, oh yeah. I didn't see his. Death Rest in peace, man. Here, okay. <laughs> he made some great movies, and uh, oh, he made right, the he River did. Wild, yeah. which was uh, uh, a big movie for me as a teenager. Oh, um, yeah, Eight Mile. We watched for film sack. He did that as well. Oh, right. Yeah. So uh, it, it, again, just it's just such a good movie from top to bottom. There's nothing ever wrong with it. You can't ever. Poke, poke holes in this movie and it's just it's it's nice it, it you know it has a it, it's a disney like i say <laughs> disney doesn't um disney doesn't make you know movies where the teenager dies at in, on the rocks <laughs> in the end you know what i mean like no, they just no. uh, so it's just it's it's cool it's, i want to see it pleasant it looks great i like this kind of it stuff is. and i like gerard butler unapologetically i like him i know a lot of people are like ah whatever 300 guy just making more movies that sound like 300 or making more of these white house down movies or whatever i don't care i like him a lot and i'll watch him in anything yeah and this is him at 40 and he's called upon to play just a 40 something who serves big waves you know and and like to it's perfect for him he really puts himself into this role it's really good he's uh the this new thing he's in called plane um, oh yeah getting good reviews <laughs> Surpri- wow. i was surprised because yeah. it sounded like another one of these things where it wasn't going to go well but um it's i, I it's feel like right. i feel like he is able to take mediocre material and elevate it a little i agree you know and we talked yeah. we talked about this on film sec the the whole london has fallen angel has fallen movies that whole series. yeah that's you know that's a mediocre concept you can't make that great yeah. but he elevates it a little you know yeah i agree mm-hmm. This one actually seems like it might be the stuff. Might be the business. Might be fun to see. So I don't know if we wait till film sack or if plane's worth seeing now. But 
I I will it. watch Mike Coulter in anything ever. <laughs> yeah. You like the Mike Coulter, do you? I do. Yeah. Oh, Luke my Cage, gosh. Baby. Yeah. He is my uh, Luke Cage. Power. He is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't, uh, wasn't he a... Oh, I'm thinking of somebody else. Never mind. Yeah, no, it's, you're right. I almost said Nick. I almost <laughs> I said. You, I almost said. How you're gonna finish. No, I almost <laughs> said Nick Cage, and I don't know why I was saying that. Oh, so yeah, close, Luke Cage. Yeah, <laughs> Mike Coulter should play Nick Cage in a Nick Cage <laughs> biography. That's a, that's a really funny idea. Yeah, my brain broke there a little. Um, all right, these three movies we put them up on QuickTMS.li uh, every day. Uh, I, when I say we, I mean Brian Ibbett there. over there. Yeah, and uh, they're posted and ready for you to go look, click on, so you have no excuse. Uh, even even Christine. Sit out of luck dot com. We uh, we have a place for you, <laughs> so go check it out. Uh, Randy, always a pleasure. This weekend we're doing a fun. We talked about it with Dunaway, but Dare we're doing go, a very yeah. fun Daredevil show. Looking forward to that. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. I, for years, I wanted us to sack Daredevil and then Electra back to back, and uh, we just can't ever get Electra streaming. Yeah. So let's just like, get on with our lives. Let's get on with our lives. I got the DVD. Yeah. I could send you guys copies of it if you want. <laughs> yeah. And tune in this weekend because it's the return of Scott Fletcher's description readings yes. uh, this week. Very excited. That about is that. so exciting, dude. I know. It's, a, it's like 2012 all up in here. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, back, it's back when Chasing Mavericks came out. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's going to do it. Randy, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next sure. week. And one more thing. Okay, bye. All right. Uh, he was lying. Oh, he made I, that he up. He did it to us again. Oh, that guy. He oh, made it up. That's right. Uh, quick note before we get out of here. Got an email from Charlie Deve, Deve, De, De Vida. De La Vida. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Lavida. I couldn't get Dare DeVille out of my head. <laughs> it's kind of in there. Yeah. It's like all the letters look like they're in De La Vida except for the R. Yeah. <laughs> Dope. Uh, it says this. I thought, uh, sorry, it's a thought to end the day. Hey there, Bone and Skull. I randomly or had a random thought. I wanted to run by Scott regarding this thing with old movies he has uh, and people being dead in them. You know, I, I was like, oh, yeah. nobody in here is alive or whatever. Uh, Have you ever stopped to think about the very real possibility that some person is listening or watching your content on the back of some disp- dystopian tanker truck with flames pouring out the side a century from now and thinking about the fact that they are listening to a dead guy asking for a future friend, Charlie? No, I have thought about it. Of course. Like, yeah. there's enough content out there. Dude, TMS alone, what are we, 2,408 shows today? Yeah. There's yeah. enough of that floating around that the, the possibility exists that in 100 years, someone somewhere is listening to this in some archaic way. Right. And we're gone. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we're both dead. We're both long gone. Uh, but AI versions of us still exist, and they're still putting out new episodes <laughs> of the show. <laughs> yep. They're still cutting <laughs> Dunaway off unceremoniously. They're still <laughs> exactly. Yep. Oh, I love it. Yep. I love it. Some guy uh, named. Some guy no, named. It'd be funny. They'd be. They'd be really disappointed with the fact that you know we're not talking about anything current. But uh, other than that, yeah. <laughs> it'd be amazing though. Like uh, some robot named Lucky Phil got pulled into the contest and like. <laughs> exactly. How can they do that? I wonder. Now it is time for Babel Royale. Babel Royale. Brian, I had a dream last night. In my <laughs> dream, I killed a monkey. <laughs> The anyway. people are dead. <laughs> the people are dead. I All mean, right. you know what? That's my next rewatch is uh, Flight of the Concords. There we go. That's my oh, next happy That's re-watch. a great just put it on and let it rip, you yes, know? Yes, it is. For I sure. agree. I'm kind of in the mood for that as well. Uh, <laughs> that'll do it for uh, today. Patreon.com slash TMS is where you can show your devotion directly to us at Patreon.com slash TMS. One of you today is getting pulled at random. For a little extra swag in the mail. Don't know who what? it is yet. I'll How tell cool you to- that is. Yeah, I'll tell you yeah. tomorrow who I picked. But I'm just going to go in there, do a random number generator, get our total number of patrons, doesn't matter what level, and bam, you're going to get a little something in the mail. Oh, cool. yeah. Cool, cool. Anyway, uh, watch for that. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be pulling the trigger on letting people order the uh, TMS Steam Deck again because I just peeked around the corner if people saw me disappear off screen for a second during recommendals and uh i took everything apart on that uh, 3d printer installed a new nozzle changed the bowden tube all of it and it's printing like a dream right now so oh, nice um, coverville3d.etsy.com 
that's where you want to go. That's it. Yeah, for the TMS Stream Deck, and you'll see all the colors it's available in. Glow in the Dark seems to be the most popular one, oddly enough. Yeah, disclaimer, it's a, ste- it's a Steam Deck uh, stand, not a uh, Steam Deck, everybody, just so you know. <laughs> yes. You don't want don't go there expecting a $30 uh, freaking... No, you know. yeah, no, that would be a great offer if it was. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can you can change the colors. I, you know what I would recommend doing is just getting a little piece of felt and gluing it into the very bottom, the recessed area, uh, just to help protect your Steam Deck, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're very cool. There you go. So now available again up there at coverville3d.etsy.com. That's right. I ordered some labels just to test out a label company on Etsy or a, a, yeah. a sticker account. company. Kind yeah. Of? Or, yeah, oh. stickers. I want to do some some specials and I wanted to see how they were. Their pricing was good and their reviews were really well. Mm-hmm. They're good. And they said they'd contact me within like an hour of the order and they still haven't contacted me. It makes oh, me nervous. No. Well, I'm about to put uh, Kia on blast uh, on Twitter because uh, two weeks ago they said, "Hey, we really want to talk to you about your your bad experience with uh, you know with Kia. Mm-hmm. Um, DM DM us your VIN number and your phone number." And I like right, first thing I'm doing is checking to make sure that that's really Kia, yeah. and it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Look at you, security minded. That's Heck, good. Yeah. And then I DM'd him. That was two weeks ago. I've heard nothing. Oh. So. See, sometimes. Yeah, put them on blast. Do it. Yeah. Put them on blast. Yep. I'm not going to really put them on. I'm just going to like say, yep, yeah, looks like your uh, response, Kia uh, regular response is just as good as as the dealership, the Kia dealership response. There you go. Call them monkey chodes if you're really in the mood. Be my guest. Uh, all right, that's it for today. We're out of here. Brian, let's play a song and then go. What do you got? Okay, I've got a request. This one's going out to Jim of California. That's how he signed it, Jim of California. Hey, Pension and 401k, this is Jim from Rain-Soaked, California. I'm requesting a song sometime in January to start the celebration of the year that I plan to retire. Oh. This fall, after 35, I'm sorry, 38 years of military and federal service, I will reach the age I'm allowed to retire. And I plan to get out while I'm still somewhat young enough to travel and have some fun. During my career, I've been to both Salt Lake City and Denver for work. Salt Lake City was for the 2002 Olympics, and Denver was for the Democratic National Convention in 2008. My agency was one of many that helped with security. Had great times at both. Sorry, Scott, Denver was better. Not so damn cold. Oh, well, it just depends on the time time of year year you go. We're all the same over here. (laughs) Uh, I don't know what song goes with retiring soon, so I'm asking for a cover of Led Zeppelin, Black Dog. This was the first rock song that I heard that really caught my attention. I used to borrow my brother's cassette tape and play the song over and over. Thanks, Jim. Congratulations. 38 freaking years, man. That's a lot. Yes. Yeah. Damn. I waited for it and you didn't do it. So he says, P.S. Brian, if Scott says thank you for your service, tell him it's not necessary. I didn't do that great a job. We never, <laughs> I never say it because too many service people tell me they hate it. They don't yeah, like it. So exactly. I don't do it anymore. I just say, oh man, that's crazy. You're over there. Hope you hope you're doing good. That's kind of yeah. all I can do. Because exactly. I've had too all many right. people get mad. I don't know why they get mad. But they get mad. I don't know about getting mad. They just feel like yeah, or it's an empty platitude kind of thing. Yeah, probably that. Yeah. yeah. So I won't. I don't just, worry. I just say you're cool. Yeah, you're cool, man. <laughs> you're cool. You're cool. Uh, Black Dog. So the version I'm going to play is by, since he visited Denver and liked it so much, we're going to play a local Denver band. This is a band called Opie Gone Bad. And the lead singer is a dude named Jake Schroeder IV. Jake, uh, for a long time, uh, retiring last year, I believe, was the singer at the beginning of the um, uh, the Colorado Avalanche games, the hockey team. Uh, who would sing the uh, national anthem. And he has an incredible voice. But Opie Gone Bad is one of these bands that, like, does the thing, the parts of Red Hot Chili Peppers that I like, but does it without the stuff that I don't like. Mm. Uh, just just some good rock funk. Uh, anyway, here is Opie Gone Bad and their cover of Led Zeppelin's Black Dog. Sounds great. We'll be back tomorrow, Therapy Thursday, and a whole bunch more. We'll see you then. Yeah. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. The morning stream. Oh, thanks, Adam Curry. Oh, I haven't heard from that guy in a while. Wonder what he's doing. Yeah, you he know has talent. talent. Yeah, him and I assume him and, uh, and Dvorak, Dvorak still do their thing. Do 